talking with celebrities who've made careers out of distinct looks that set them apart from stereotypical images of Hollywood perfection. Well, my next guest is best known for being the Snapple Lady. Please welcome Wendy Kaufman. Good. Good to see you, Wendy. It's great to be here, all of me. Oh. <laughs> I did not lose 348 pounds. <laughs> I'm not interested in losing 348 pounds. No. No, we already have that on the show. I now know. we have He's you. Great. Is that unbelievable? We have the Snapple what a, lady. What a story, huh? It's an incredible story. Oh, but God. I, I, you know, I, I did Celebrity Fit Club, Keith, and lost 55 pounds. Whoa. I gained about 20 back, but I'm talking to this guy. I'm like, I cannot believe it. I cannot live the rest of my life walking up 48 flights of steps a day. I just can't, can't do, do this. It. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so when I say the Snapple lady, I said more than once, is do you like that? I mean, oh, it's a role for you, but... It's been the most unbelievable story because really... I really was never an actress. I went to Syracuse University, and I actually went to the Newhouse School, and I took film courses. And my father was like, you are just wasting your time at that school. And um, I went into his business, the steel business, and I was there for many years. But I am just prone to every addiction in the world. And I got, <laughs> it, it, it's just so who I from... am. And I, you know, was smoking, drinking, doing drugs, uh. and there was an intervention in my family. And I ended up going away for a year to get well. From and what? Do you mind telling us? From, well, from... From cocaine was my okay. drug of choice. So yeah. you, you and, were... I was, and I was smoking four packs a day. You know, also... Smoking to... four packs of cigarettes a day, using cocaine, your yeah. family intervened and said this can't go on. Cannot go on. And I figured I'd go to a 28-day program, and they held me for 45 days and told me, Wendy, if you don't go for further help, you are going to die. And I didn't even recognize the magnitude of how horrid my drug problem was. But finally, when they brought me to my therapeutic community, I did realize, oh, my God, I really could die. It was at a point, Keith, that I could press my cheeks and my nose would start bleeding. Oh my I mean, God. that's how sick I was. But you know what? I went, and, I, you know, I don't look back because the beauty of the gift that was given to me is that I did recover. I've been sober for almost 18 years Congratulations. now. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you can't, um, you can't act that out. You, you know, can't act that out. No, There's no... It, it, this is the real stuff, and that's why when I talked with Ron, I mean, the yeah, there you are. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but you had this moment in your life uh, of desperation where you considered taking your life. Yeah, I did, actually. Yeah, what was that? What, what drove you to that? Uh, in high school, I lost, like, pretty much close to 22 of my closest friends over a period of years. Just by and, various yeah, events? Yeah, uh, car wreck, suicide, drug overdose, whatever, you name it, we had it. And uh, then my... Basically, the sister that I was, um, the one who really backed me up, uh, yeah. she, she passed away in 90, and it just devastated me. So I took a 45, loaded it, put it to my head, and I pulled the trigger. So, but it was a dud. Thank God. You know, <laughs> otherwise yeah, thank I'd be going, God. how the hell is he here? But um, that was a significant point, because I actually got sent to a, a uh, center, and I was the only, not only, only fat guy, but I was the only guy on the whole floor of these girls who were all anorexic. Whoa. So, you know, so obviously I'm walking in, I'm the epitome of everything they hate already, so. And these, these addictions, you know, they, they mask this underlying truth that well, we all have access to. For but me, I mean, I, when I was born, I was on my first diet at six months old. I mean, I was just a fat child, and my, my mother would tell us stories where I would go to the park at two years old. All the other children would sit and play, and I would run amongst the kids and steal their ice cream cones and beat them up. So, yes. you know, I, so... I mean, so you have to look genetically and say, you know, it's, it's embedded in you, I think. But in any event, yeah, I was really a train wreck. And they told my family at my rehab center I was never to go back to my family business. And I knew the owner of Snapple, who knew oh. me, who loved me, who believed in me more than I would ever believe in myself. Isn't and the... he said, come to work for me. But life's strange, because he says, come to work at Snapple, and then you've got this history in your background of film and, and the arts. 
and they come together at a soft drink company. It was the craziest I, thing. Well, you have to know that at first, I didn't, you know, go into Snapple to be the Snapple lady. It didn't exist. <laughs> so I went no, and it was I... Destiny. It, it just... It it was, well, how was it not going to happen, Wendy? It, it had I mean, to happen because yeah. here's what... I, I so worked, what happened? I worked yeah. in the order department <laughs> to learn the flavors, to learn our distributors, you know, to learn something about the beverage business. I had no idea. And I noticed that incredible letters were coming in from all over the country. And nobody was answering them because nobody cared to. Why would you want to put extra work in if you don't have to? And I took those letters home with me because they reminded me of an epiphany that I had <laughs> <laughs> many years ago. I was in love with the Brady Bunch, and I loved Greg Brady more than anyone. Okay. And I wrote him For Many one, women did. Right? That's true, did, right? Yeah. right? Let's talk amongst ourselves. Right. Yeah. I, I know. You loved Greg Brady? Look, beyond. Beyond. And I wrote my only fan letter to Greg Brady, and he never wrote me back. So, so. not that I lost sleep, because, you know, I didn't. Well, there but, you are with Greg but Brady. But I, I did meet him. I you mean, 20 him. years Good. later, I did meet him. <laughs> But you decided, <laughs> so you wrote back to everybody. So I decided, so, you know, the people that are writing these letters to Snapple are like writing letters like I wrote to Greg Brady, and I will never <laughs> They love Snapple anybody... like you loved Greg. Well, I, but I embrace these people. If You know what, Keith, if you take the time to write to somebody to show that I you agree. care and you love somebody, you know, enough with some of this corporate stuff. I didn't like that. I didn't like the style of that, and my bosses were so great. And they said, you know what, Wendy, do what you have to do. And I, at first, when I went into the commercials, obviously, there had never been a spokesmodel like, <laughs> like me Like you. I was like, yeah, and we got Vinny reality? coming from behind the bar to, like, dominate, you know, HBO. Right. And we got you coming from uh, Snapple to be the Snapple lady, which is a good thing for all of us. I like that. We'll be right back. <laughs>